Hello and welcome back. In today's module, we are going to introduce you to JavaScript. We're going to learn what is JavaScript and some basic functions. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a computer language that brings interactivity to otherwise static web pages. JavaScript is the third pillar of building web pages. Nearly every single website on the internet is using JavaScript for some purpose. On a web page, whether it is advertising, user input validation, or some other complex action, it was probably programmed in JavaScript. Up to this point, we have only been using HTML tags and CSS styles to change the look of our page. In this module, we are going to look at how we can use some simple code in JavaScript to make our web page interactive. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Visual Studio Code and it automatically opened our file that we last were working on. So just to refresh your memory, if I go to my browser and then my choose to code folder, it's our simple visit any town USA website with the top header, the bottom footer, some simple layout information and just some basic colors on the page just so that we can learn some different items. So let's start with the simplest example of JavaScript on your page. We will add a simple alert that will run as soon as your web page has completed loading. Let's add the following on load attribute to the body tag. So I'm going to type on load equals alert open parentheses page is loaded. Close parentheses semicolon and then a quote. So if I save this and I go back to my browser and I refresh the page, you'll see an alert comes up, page is loaded. Did your browser warn you about running scripts or ActiveX controls? This may happen if you're running Internet Explorer. So if I open with Internet Explorer here, you'll see down here I got a message that says allow block content. For now, it's okay, you can hit the allow because we know we're the ones creating this content and there's that alert again, page is loaded. It is good to point out that there can be good JavaScript and bad JavaScript. There are websites that use bad JavaScript to try to steal personal and private information from you in order to do bad things. Since you are running this JavaScript locally in your browser rather than pulling it from Azure, IE is just making sure that you know there is potentially a risk. How do we add JavaScript to our page? It is interesting that we just started writing code in our body tag. For a simple interaction, this may be acceptable, but you will likely not want a lot of code in your tags. We have already seen that we can add code directly to your tag. Let's fix our body tag to give us flexibility for more code. Change the onload attribute to the following. Onload equals onload open parentheses, close parentheses. What this does is this will tell the page to call the onload function when our page is done loading. Let's add that onload function to our page. We're going to do this at the end of the head tag or actually just before the end of the head tag. So let's go ahead and add the code in that's in the file. So again, what we did here is we told the body that onloading call this function onload. So this is going to go up here to our script and find the function on load, which is simply doing that alert function. Again, you can add even more functions in here, but I'm going to go ahead and save the file and let's refresh and let's see what happens. It worked function on load called. Now we could also be explicit and tell the browser that our script is in fact JavaScript and you may see this in many example scripts, but it isn't required. Keep in mind that JavaScript is case sensitive. So on load and on load are not the same thing. Meaning if we were to do another function called on load, this would actually be considered a completely different function because you notice the L is lowercase and in our other one, the L is capital. If your code isn't doing what you're expected, you may want to check the spelling and casing of your function. 
In this example, we put the script code in the head tag. We could also put the script in the body tag. When placing scripts in the body tag, it's a good practice to put all of the script at the bottom to improve the page performance. If you have a lot of script on a single page, your page can start to get out of hand. In this case, it might be a good idea to move your script code out to another file and simply add a reference to your page. Let's do this with the script that we have right now. In BS Code, let's add a new file and we'll call it app.js. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna choose to code, go to new file, let's call it app.js. Okay, and inside app.js, we're gonna copy that same function over that we did in the main page. Let me go back to my index.html and here's my function on load. So I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna to go to app.js, oops, app.js, and I'm gonna paste that function in there. And important, make sure in the external file, you do not include the script tags, you just put the function itself. So let me show you that real quick. In index.html, you notice we had to start with the script, put our function, and then we end with the script tag. And this tells the browser, hey, this is where the scripts start and stop. In the app.js file, you are just putting the functions. And then in the main index file, we're now going to reference that app.js file. So we're going to change this tag. So first of all, I'm going to delete the function out of here. And I'm just going to put source equals and then app.js, which is our file. And we're going to put type equals application slash JavaScript. And I'll, and I'll bring the closing tag up. Okay, so now again, what we did is we just changed it to, instead of looking for scripts in the head tag, it's actually gonna look at this external file, app.js, which has our onload function, and let's see if that works. So I'm gonna save that. Let me save app.js. And again, I'm just gonna collapse this down so that we have more room for coding. And if I go back to the page and I refresh it, it still worked. Again, it went out to that external app.js and it loaded the onload function. One of the advantages to putting your script in an external file is that it separates your code from your text. Additionally, it allows you to reuse the code from one page to another. If you start copying your scripts from page to page, if you decide you wanna change the functionality, you will have to change your code in multiple places, which is bad. If you find yourself copying code, you should start thinking about using external files. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna show you one more important thing with JavaScript, and that's how to comment on your code and also comment items out to stop them from happening. So going forward, we don't want this pop-up coming up each time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment the actual function out. And the way we do this is the way you can tell the browser to basically skip over any line of code is you can add two forward slashes in front of it. You see it turned green. Visual Studio Code automatically knows it's commented out. So the option here is you could actually put two slashes in front of each item and that would comment it out. But in this case, we'll have it still call the onload function, but we're just gonna stop the alert function from happening. And another great use for these comment tags is that you can mark up your code and leave notes for yourself. Because when you start working on a project, sometimes you may write some code and believe it or not, you forget what it does or why you did it a certain way. So you can leave a note. This is an example of an alert function. So you will see this and then any anyone else working on your website will see this as well. So for now, I've actually commented out the alert function. And if I go back to the browser and I refresh, you see it no longer comes up. Making your content dynamic. Popping up annoying alerts is not the best use of JavaScript. So let's take a look at some better uses. First, we will take a look at dynamic content. We are going to start simple and update the content when you click a button. First, let's add a placeholder for some content in the footer. So if I go back to my code and I go to the footer, Okay, after the copyright, I'm gonna add a new paragraph tag and I'm gonna give it an ID and we're gonna call it timestamp. And then I'm gonna close that paragraph tag. 
Notice we gave an ID to the P tag in the footer. This is going to give us the ability to modify that tag specifically. Let's modify the JavaScript code and then take a look at what's going on. So if I go back to my onload function, by the way, another way to get to the other files is instead of clicking this, uh, the explore button over here, you can just click on the name of the file and your recently opened files all show up here. So I'm just going to click up here and go right to my app.js. In my app.js, in the onload function, I'm going to add this line of code, which is in the documentation file that you have. Okay, so let's save that and let's reload the page. Next, examine the footer on your page and notice that the content shows the date and time of the page load. Once the document was loaded, we asked for the element that had the ID of timestamp, and then we modified all of the HTML inside to be the result of the date function. It is important when doing code like this that you wait until the document is completed loading. If the code ran before the footer had been loaded, the code would have executed and nothing would have happened. Responding to events. So far, we have looked at running code when a page loads. However, there are a lot of interesting things happening when a user is looking at our page. If they are using a mouse, there are events that can set code in motion when the mouse hovers over an element or clicks an element. If you create a form for people to enter data, you might want to make sure that they are entering valid data. Let's add to our web page and see what that might look like. We are going to make a text box that will check that you entered a number between 1 and 10. First, let's add a text box to collect data from the user. So again, I'm going back to my index.html page and we'll add it to the top of our main section content. If we use the input tag, one way we can control what people enter is to use the type attribute. In this case, we will set the type equal to number. For some browsers, this will restrict the input to numeric or hint that the on-screen keyboard should be numeric. Let's add a place to put a message after we have checked the number. Finally, we'll add a button to allow the user to submit the button value that was entered into the text box. So let's go ahead and enter in the following code. Save your work and refresh the browser and you should see these new elements on your web page. There they are right there. Right now, you might be able to add characters and really big numbers. So let me give that a shot. Okay, so I could type in characters and if I type in a big number and I hit submit, I mean, nothing's happening, but you see it lets me do that. We will need to add a script that tells you whether or not the number is a valid number between one and 10. Next, we need to create our check number function. Let's go back and open up app.js. And let's create a function called check number. So again, I'm going to start a new line and do function check number. Open and close parentheses, then open and close curly braces. Remember, casing is important, so make sure that N is capital, because that's we're going to use that in our exercise. Now that we have the function created, we need to add some variables to hold our data. So we're going to add two variables, one called the number and one called the message. Okay, and we're going to get to those in just a second. Now, let's use that same get element by ID function to get the value of the text box that you, the user entered. So we're going to put the following code in. And again, I'm copying and pasting this from the example documentation. I'm just going to space these out. Next, we will use an if statement to check the value of the number to see if it passes the check for being between 1 and 10. We will make three checks. If any of them is true, then we don't need to test any further because it's a bad number. We do this with a logical or statement. In JavaScript, this is done using two pipes or these two guys right there. So first we want to see if it is not a number. If that is not true, then we will check to see if the number is less than one. If that check is not true, then we will check to see if the number is greater than 10. 
If all of these checks are not true, then our number is good and we set the message to tell the user that they gave us a good number. If any one of these conditions is true, we don't need to check any further. We just need to tell the user that their number was bad. Finally, we use the get element by ID to set the message on our web page to give feedback to our user. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, you see here we use the comment tag. And again, I copied and pasted this code from the exercise and I'm gonna go through and explain it. So basically we're saying, again, if, and then this is a JavaScript function, is not a number, the number, or the number is less than one, or the number is greater than 10, then give them the message or return the message, number was expected to be between one and 10. Again, we're saying if any of these are true, then let's do this. If not, else let's go down here and say the number is good and then finally we're going to tell it okay whatever the message is return that message in the id called number message so let's go ahead and save this and we're going to go back to the browser i'm going to refresh okay and i'm going to put my name in here so i'm going to put joe and i'm going to hit submit number was expected between one and 10. Okay, so that seems to be working. So I'm gonna put a number in here. I'm gonna put a four. Submit, number is good. Let's try zero. Submit, number was expected between one and 10. And then finally, let's try something over 10. So I'll put 100. Number was expected between one and 10. Okay, so the basis of programming really works around these type of functions. You, you basically are saying, if this happens, then do this. And then obviously you, it gets more complicated than that. It starts with something as basic as if this number is greater than one and less than 10, then do this. But this could be if the user inputs a certain value or if this value matches this value, really there's no limit to what you can do and how far you can take this. One thing to keep in mind is that just because you use JavaScript to keep a user from entering an unexpected value, never trust that number to be sent back to your server. If a user turned JavaScript off, this would not work. If an evil user used a tool to modify the value of your JavaScript ran, he could potentially send harmful data to your server. In this module, we covered the very basics of JavaScript to interact with your user. We displayed a pop-up to the user, we added the current time to the page on the fly, and finally we looked at validating the input of the user. In the next module, we're gonna take things a step further and look at using JavaScript to bring data from other websites into our web page. Thank you.